Hello, my name is Joshua Fry, and today I will be going over how to audition for the classic game show Jeopardy. So the first thing you need to know for Jeopardy is how to play the game. And the best way to do that is just to watch it on TV. So we have here a picture of a typical Jeopardy board, which has six categories and five answers for each category, each with a different dollar amount for it. These are the probabilities of a daily double on the board layout that we saw before. So on this board, you would find a daily double most likely in the bottom left corner at the $800 mark. Uh, a daily double, if you watch the show, you're familiar with it. If you don't know what it is, it is a clue on which you will not get the money that is that the clue is worth. If you get it right, you will get however much you bet. If you get it wrong, you will get however much you bet on it. So this is a screenshot of the practice test for adults, which is what you will have to take if you want to audition for the show. Uh, this is a typical um, example of how the actual online test will go. Works by this Nobel Prize winner includes Song of Solomon and Beloved. And for this test specifically, for the online test, you don't have to answer in the form of, the qu of, of a question like you do for the show. You can just type in the answer, which in this case is Toni Morrison. And then this is a classic example of something else you have to keep in mind when watching the show. This is a before and after clue. Now, before and after clues come up in both Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy, and they are typically where there are two answers that you need and one answer morphs into the next answer. So for this one, a song by Coolio from Dangerous Minds goes back in time to become a 1667 John Milton classic. The answer for that would be, what is Gangsta's Paradise Lost? So then we have here a typical screenshot of a mock game audition. We have a uh, contestant coordinator, Karinda Nusu, up in the top right corner, helping three potential contestants along in playing a mock game. For the mock games, you will use a ballpoint, ballpoint pen instead of a buzzer, because obviously they don't have the resources to send every potential contestant a buzzer. Now, when you make it onto the show, you do want to be able to uh, know how to pose with the buzzer. And this is a picture of what has been thought to be the ideal pose by uh, former contestant Fritz Holtznagel, which is to hold the buzzer in your dominant hand, hold your wrist loosely with your non-dominant hand, and rest both arms in front of you like so. But here's a screenshot from the recent Tournament of Champions, which shows that you can hold the buzzer any way you want. You can see that Amy is holding it by her side, Maureen is holding it up in front of her, and Tyler is relaxing it on the podium in front of him. Another thing to keep in mind with Jeopardy is wagering strategy. And this right here is a perfect example of a contestant who used wagering strategy much to his advantage throughout his run. James Holtzauer won 32 games of Jeopardy back in 2019, and only four of them, there were only four games in which he could have been caught with a wrong answer in Final Jeopardy, but he was correct. Um, for all but one final Jeopardy. Now here is a, um, a screenshot of a perfect example of wagering strategy. This was super champion Ken Jennings 75th game um, where he finally lost to competitor Nancy Zerg who wagered just enough money to overtake him if he got if he had bet zero on this question. Now he did get the question wrong. So no matter what he would have wagered he would have lost to her and her wagering strategy paid off perfectly. And uh, that's all I have for this. Thank you.